Hello and welcome to The Modern Skein. My name is Sharon Graff and I'm the owner of the yarn shop called The Modern Skein here in Montgomery, Texas. And I am very happy that you tuned in to today's podcast. It is number 54, I'm pretty positive, and I have a new camera set up. So I'm still trying to figure out exactly where I look. So hopefully I'm looking in the right spot. Right here, yep, that's it. Okay, so, <clears throat> Happy New Year, right? Well, no, today is New Year's Eve, and I should be getting it up later today. So, Happy New Year's Eve, Happy New Year, if you're watching this after the New Year. And I just want to take a moment and thank each and every one of you guys for tuning into the podcast, subscribing, giving some thumbs up, likes, commenting. It really does mean a lot to me. And I really appreciate each and every one of you guys that are viewing. It does make me want to continue doing the podcast and I will be continuing the podcast through the next year. Uh, January is going to be quite tough with doing podcasts simply because I'm gone quite a bit. Um, we actually leave on the 2nd for Josh and I's little couple's getaway. And then right after that, I go to Vogue, although I will be filming some content at Vogue and hopefully podcast maybe at Vogue or maybe do a live from Vogue. Um, I think that would be really fun to do a live from Vogue or at least record a partial podcast or some content for the podcast while at Vogue. Um, but anyway, so stay tuned to see, um, it's been a couple minutes, a couple minutes. It's been a while since I podcasted before Christmas. I'm out of the, the hang of it. Um, and I feel like I'm really short. I don't know why. Okay. Stop being goofy. Let me see if I can fix this. That's a little better. Of course, now we chop off the mannequin. Oh, well, she's not staying here that long. Here. There, it's a little better. Anyway, wow, she's leaning. <sighs> Welcome to the podcast. Anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I do have a finished object, as you can tell. Tell this is the port. She, she just does not want to stand upright today. Goodness, this is the portage cardigan by Melissa. I want to say Schomburg, but it's not. That's not right. But it's S C H something after that. And I deeply apologize if you happen to watch this podcast, which I really doubt you do. But Anyway, um, if you look up Portage, P-O-R-T-A-G-E, cardigan, it will come up. So it's got these fun pockets, and then it has this beautiful texture all along the back. I don't know if you can see. Well, but see the cable right there? Nice long sleeves with a cuff. This is just such a pretty cardigan. Color is Suburban Stitcher. Um, oh, that's not the color. The color is Oslo by Suburban Stitcher in her Merino DK. I'm getting this out of here before it falls down. Okay. Stay. Uh, so, yes. Color is Oslo by Suburban Stitcher in her Merino DK. I believe grand total it took seven skeins to knit that. I need to double check and see exactly how many I ordered because I have the equivalent of two balls left. If I only ordered eight, I either ordered eight or 12. I know that's so helpful. I believe the size that I knit, which I did not knit the smallest size, I knit the size recommended for a 36 inch bust, which I believe was the second or third size. I honestly don't remember at this moment in time. Um, but it was recommended for a 36 inch bust. I love how it fits. It's just the tiniest bit loose without, um, without being oversized and boxy. Very flattering to wear. 
um, very comfortable and cozy and you feel like you can snuggle up in it, but it's also, it's not skin tight, but it's not like miles and miles of extra sweater either. It does have some pretty um, multiple sizes um, going, I think, all the way down to maybe a 30 and then up quite a bit. So hopefully your bus size is in there and it is designed to be worn even actually with negative one to three inches of ease, so not positive ease. I believe mine technically has maybe one inch of positive ease, um, which is fine with me. I don't really like negative, negative ease, but I'm not a fan of a ton of positive ease either. I know, it's Goldilocks. Anyway, so that's my finished object. It's a very good knit, very easy knit. And I'm thinking actually in the springtime, we may do a Portage Cardigan knit along. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking also, side note, there's gonna be a whole lot of things coming into play when I get back from Vogue. So stay tuned, mark your calendars, because starting February, there's gonna be some major announcements, all very, very good and very fun announcements. But one of the things that we're doing, ra really ramping up this year is for in-person, we're doing a whole lot more technique classes. Um, so, and like class, pattern specific classes. So let's say we have, we're gonna do the Portage Cardigan. Well, if you're local and here, you can attend the uh, weekly meetup classes. If you're going to do that, um, there will be a fee for those classes, but it will walk you step by step through the pattern, which is great if you're maybe never knit a sweater or you're unfamiliar with cabling or, or whatever it is, um, or you just want to make sure your hand is held through the whole process. But if you are not local, you will still be able to participate in the knit along portion of whatever pattern that we're doing. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for more details. That will come February or March when we get all of the details worked out exactly on how we're gonna do that. But definitely stay tuned. There will be a lot more classes coming. There'll be just a lot more, more fun things. And we're gonna even start doing some lecture series. So lecture series are going to be entailed with um, either free or really low cost as much as possible depending on who we have coming in to give the lecture. Obviously I do have to compensate them for their time. Um, basically it will be, it won't be a class, so you can bring social knitting, whatever, hang out, but the person that is teaching the lecture will talk about maybe a specific subject. So let's just say for instance we're going to have a uh, talk about fiber types. So then in that class you would learn, or not class, in lecture, uh, it might be an hour to two hours of someone sharing all the different types of fibers in, in the knitting community and why you want to choose a BFL versus a Merino. What's the instance you want to do that in? Why why is there a difference? Is there a difference? How does that affect your knitting? Things like that. So, um, yeah, hopefully you're interested in those. I know I've talked with several of you guys and you have been interested in classes or lectures like that. Um, so stay tuned. The best way to stay tuned for that is, of course, either subscribing to the podcast um, or signing up for our newsletters, which we're sending out Roughly one a month, we will send out an extra one if there's either special hours, a special event, holiday, things like that, but it's usually not more than two per month, um, so we don't inundate you like on a daily basis or anything. Um, and also, of course, stay tuned to Facebook and Instagram for the latest posts because we usually try and post a couple times a day. So, moving on, um, it's not a recent finished object, but I'm wearing my turtle dove. By Spas Truco. So I'm actually, yes, this is the sweater I knit and then ripped out and re knit. And I'm actually going to rip out the, the cast off and do a different finish on the bottom. So right now, it just has the rolled edge, which is cute, cropped, but I have to wear a tank underneath it. So what I plan on doing is taking out. Taking out this edge, just the bind off, and then doing the split 
hem. So just starting and doing the front stitches, you know, like four inches, and then doing the back about six inches, and doing um, the twisted split, twisted rib split hem option that the pattern does. So it would be a twisted rib like this, and like the cuff on the sleeve, it would be matched on the bottom. So that's a side note there. Moving on to my works in progress. When am I going to do this? I don't know. I don't have time to do it right now. I want to do it right now. I don't have time to do it right now, so it's not going to get done. It'll probably, in all honesty, happen sometime later this year or next year. But I still have like two balls of yarn in the same dye lot, so it's not a big deal. So the project that I've been working on most recently, and of course I stopped in the middle of a row, is back on my rose cardigan. So if you've watched the podcast, you know I have completed two of the four quadrants of my rose cardigan, and I am now almost done with quadrant three. So that's actually the wrong side. This. So I have done my little back neck shaping. This is the left, or the back back left, I believe. Um, and now I just have to knit so many rows before putting them on waist yarn. And then I can start quadrant four, which is the last front piece. And then once you do that, then you block them all, wet block them. And then you can seam them up and then you can start on the collar, the cuff and the hem. And that's all that's left. So I'm quite excited about that. Um, I'm really hoping to have this done I would absolutely adore to have this done before Vogue. I don't know if I can. I am going to take this on my trip. Normally I take a new project to work on on a trip and I still might take something new, but I really want to finish this and this next one I'm going to show you um, sooner rather than later. So I'm going to take both of them and then maybe a small, small project as like an incentive if I can finish both while on the trip then I can do this. The trip that we're going on is a Caribbean cruise. Um, we're going to do some fun stuff, but it's really a chill time cruise for us, me and Josh. So I really hope I can get a ton of knitting and a ton of reading done on this trip while laying out on a beach in a cabana somewhere. Yes. Um, so that's the rose cardigan. Progress has been made on it, which I'm very pleased with. And then the other thing, I still am working on my Kovas sweater. Um, I have split for the sleeves on that, and I'm probably about yay much into the body. And so then this, remember I had, from back in the summer, I had some pollen color, or Shibui tweed silk, no, Shibui silk cloud, and just totally spaced on the name, Lunar, which is the silk blend that I picked up at a shop. Um, and of course now we carry Shibui, so hint hint, we will be carrying this very soon. Um, and by this I mean Lunar, because we already have tweed silk cloud. Um, but I had gotten it at first to cast on the petite knit no frill sweater. Then I changed my mind and decided to do daydreamer, but I didn't quite have enough yardage, so I was going to fudge daydreamer, leave out some of the bobbles, shorten the sleeves a little bit, do some modifications. Then I decided after goodness, casting on and doing probably about this much because it's bottom up, I was like, I don't love this sweater in this yarn. There wasn't enough stitch definition. And silk does not lend itself to stitch definition because it's very loose and drapey. And Daydreamer, because of all of the fine work in it, you really needed, even though yes, you need something with like a, a fuzz or mohair with it, you don't need it, but it looks very good. But you still need a structural yarn to go with it. So I ripped it out and I decided to cast on the Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit because I have been wanting a v-neck sweater 
for a very long time. And it's like, okay, let's do this. So I've just split for sleeves, but yeah, V-neck, awesome sweater in this mustard color. And it's so light and breezy, definitely see-through, but that's okay. I wear a tank top almost under any of my sweaters anyway. Um, so yeah, so I've just split for sleeves. I've literally just split for sleeves. I'm like three rows past my split for sleeves, but I'm going to take this because now it's literally just knit in the round and then knit sleeves. Very simple. There's no increase, decrease or whatever. So this is going to be a great trip beach knit as well. And I know some of you are thinking, ooh, knitting mohair on the beach, isn't that going to be too hot? It's so light and breezy, it's not too hot at all. So that is going to be my two trip knits. That is going to be, that will be my two trip knits. I will not take the Kovas, it's just gotten too big, bulky, too much stuff. The rose cardigan will be big enough. Um, I'm trying to think what I would take. I would either take, I have yarn for a Masoni Accomplish sweater, so I might take that just a little bit to get that started should I finish the other two. Realistically, we're only gone for 12 days, so realistically, I don't think I would get both things done. Maybe, maybe I can, which would be really awesome. But I also want to read books, and I have a hard time knitting and reading books at the same time because I get old-fashioned paper books. That's the side of the point. Hold on. My coffee's on the floor because this table is literally filled with yarn. The stand for the camera is balanced precariously amongst stacks of yarn, which I'm about to show you. By the way, if you want to knit your own rose cardigan, I have um, two, well, no, three different um, sport weight four color fades from Tola Matan. One almost identically mimics the original kind of pink peach fade. Um, and it's this dusty pinks and mauves. If you're really into that for the rose cardigan, it would be great. You can match the same blue and teal fade that I'm doing. And then there's also a blue to purple fade as well. So, and plus you can also, sport weight, you can accommodate it and do it in like a heavy fingering, um, and it would be just as awesome too. So, you can definitely do that. Um, now, let's get started on what's new in the shop. Before I start on the yarn, I want to just highlight real quick, we do have the latest issue of Pom Pom Magazine. This is the terrain issue, right? Terrain, yeah. Excuse me. So there's some beautiful patterns. This sweater on the front is stunning. Beautiful patterns. There's also, I think, if you love an all over cabled sweater, find it. Da 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 da. -da. That one is gorgeous. And I really love the back of this one. That one. It just looks very retro to me. It's super cool. It's also a really fun kind of boxy. Well, there's a fun hat and color work. There's just a lot of really nice patterns in here. Uh, and then we've also started carrying Nomadic Knits magazines. So we have the latest two issues, number four and five. And we will be stocking the new issue six that's coming out this early this spring. So yes, we have Nomadic Knits. Nomadic Knits is a U.S.-based um, magazine that is filled with patterns. But then what's cool is it also, kind of similar to Lina, gives you all sorts of articles um, and it tells you because like each one is based on a state or region so like this one is all about Vermont so there's like maple syrup facts and there's talk interviews with local yarn shops and local dyers and designers um, there what I love is in the back of the book there's line pages there's even a little bit of let me, 
there. Graph paper, not right there, you can't really see it. There's graph paper, you can draw, you can doodle, you can, you can do all sorts of stuff. And there's lots of really pretty patterns in here. Um, just some gorgeous stuff. Like the patterns in this one. There's a stunning shawl. There's socks. And this. Past it. There's also a dog. Cute little dog one. Well, you can see the scarf on there. That's a pattern in there. This sweater is a pattern in there. This one. Love that sweater. And this duster is just stunning. So, yes, there's tons of patterns um, in those books. They're really great, uh, great coffee table books as well. And they're only $18 per, um, I almost said per episode, <laughs> per copy, uh, per issue. So definitely a magazine to add to your collection. Very high quality paper too, and the book is really nice. Um, I want to show we got in a little bit of Suburban Stitcher. Diane, you can kind of see we have a restock of her Merino DK. Um, and then we also got four new colors of, we do have the Oslo. Side note, we have the Oslo that the Portage cardigan is. We have sweater quantities of that. Like multiples, you, like we could do like two or three Portage cardigans with the amount that I got. So we have a lot. Um, but it's going quick, uh, so be sure and grab that if you're wanting it. And we have four colors of her Slub Sock Base, which is super fun. Um, so this is Steampunk, Oslo, Hurricane, which the cowl, the Abbey cowl that I have knit up is done in Hurricane, and then Swamp. So those four colors. We also have these four colors in DK as well. Um, so, yes, plus a few other colors. And uh, then we got in our box, or two boxes, of Chelsea Lux yarn. So I'm going to go through that. We got in Cobblestone, which is her slub sock base. We got in Merino DK, some singles, and Hair of the Mo, Mo Hair. Uh, so we'll go through that real quick. So first, Cobblestone. Get some of these colors. They're just stunning. These are some of her new colors. So this is Candied Apple. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? This new camera is really letting all the colors pop. I love it. Then we have Pecan Latte. There's always debating, is it Pecan or is it Pecan? Well, we know it's Pecan. It's not Pecan. We don't go to the bathroom in a can. It's Pecan. Uh, this is 24 Carat. Love this. It's like fire. It's gorgeous. Of course, the ever popular rose gold. This is Violet Femme. Beautiful, dusty, grubby, light lavender. This one is so gorgeous. Peacock. So rich. Love this one. Then Eucalyptus Energy for a really dusty gray teal. And then this is Semi Precious. Love the richness of this. We have a hat knit up in the Semi Precious Slub. And then Caramel Apple. And this one gorgeous. So rich. Then for Single Ply, we also have, so this is Single Ply Fingering. Semi Precious on Single Ply Fingering. Uh, charcoal favorite leather boot so with this and then we already had um, oh no and we also got in tin can where's tin can I lost it oh and Sunday times actually it was Sunday times so with these three if you want to replicate my three color cashmere cowl these are the three um, that you need to replicate the three color cashmere cowl um, which that's the pattern that I posted eh, two weeks ago maybe I was wearing so that will replicate that pattern for you um, but you can also use tin can tin can would pair really nicely as well tin can 
Um, and beeswax, which we have restocked both now. Tin can and beeswax is what I used in the Starflake Cowl by Stephen West. Uh, cowl. Starflake Knit Along by Stephen West. And we have both of those restocked too. So if you were looking for the exact colors, that was Tin Can by Chelsea Lux. And that was a single ply mixed with the plied uh, beeswax from Ching Fibers. You could also use Favorite Leather Boot or I believe it's um, Fox from A Life in the Long Grass for a very similar color as well. So then for, I think that was all the, oh no, we have one more single ply. Hold on. We have two more. We got in pecan latte on fingering and we got caramel apple. And let me show you tin can real quick because I do have that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we stuck in there. Got some of these that we already had had we put up on the wall. Um, so we got also restocked and fingering on rose gold. Rose gold is always so popular. Here's tin can. And here is stiletto and jeans. Of course, a favorite here at the shop. Then for DK, we have candied apple. So pretty. We have semi precious. We have pecan latte, and we have caramel apple. This is By the Lakeside, the color she created for Sandy By the Lakeside. We have 24 karat, beautiful color. We also restocked vintage denim, perfect like acid wash, wash denim color great for sweaters cardigans everything we have in sweater quantities we have like eight or more skeins of everything um stiletto and jeans again restocked in that that makes gorgeous sweaters by the way um yes that is it for dk then for mohair we have sandy by the lakeside we have Peacock. This is Stiletto and Jeans. It's so cool to see how differently the mohair takes color, because it does. Every fiber takes color differently. This is Semi Precious, and I paired that with the Semi Precious Cobblestone for um, the hat that we have knit up here in the shop. Then we have Rose Gold on mohair. We have Favorite Leather Boot, 24 Karat, Caramel Apple, I think I showed that one already, Sunday Times Mohair, Beautiful Neutral, and Pecan Latte. So that is it for now. We have... We have some other new yarns up on the wall, and as you can see, we have extended the wall. So we have a little more room on the wall, but yeah, there's a lot of fun things coming in store, so I hope you stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button uh, to get notified when we do put up a new episode, which I am hoping to put up something either right before or at Vogue, so stay tuned for that. Um, we also have received in uh, a whole bunch of new Red Stag fiber, and I'm putting more up today as well on the website. So if you're looking for great solid tonals um, for color work, I have all sorts of colors. We even have gradients, like fading gradients, so beautiful, beautiful options there. 
Uh, so just stay tuned, watch the website. We are going to be open normal hours today and tomorrow for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So if you get our newsletter, you would have already seen that. Come hang out with us. We're going to have a lot of fun either casting on everything or working to try and get as many projects done as possible today before the new year or before the old year is finished. But that's about it. So I will say goodbye and see you guys next time and hopefully in the store or around on the internet or on Instagram, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye!